we'll start with Kirsten in front left. Uh, Dave, when you look at just, or I guess looking ahead to Walker's start tomorrow, when you look at a start from the NLDS, what did you see from him in that one? And what are you seeing in which he could probably maybe carry some things over or make some adjustments with facing the Mets tomorrow? Um, I think in totality uh, with Walker, I would want the same um, effort, execution, focus, and uh, certainly a different result. And I say that uh, a lot of it was Walker's, uh, you know, not doing. So, yeah, I think a lot of the same. And I, and I, obviously in this situation, uh, series at one to one, um, you know, here on the road again, which we feel really confident in Walker. I expect uh, he's going to come out with the same kind of conviction and focus. Let's go to Dave, uh, third, fourth row on the left. Dave, you showed in the last round you guys can make adjustments and be nimble during a series. There's been a lot of talk about Otani not getting any hits with without runners on base. Will Smith only has two hits this postseason. Is there any thoughts about shuffling the lineup for the rest of the series? Um, no, there isn't. Um, I, I just think that, you know, you know, early on, it, it's just funny how things change where um, there was a lot of concern about Shohei not being able to get hits with the runners in scoring position. And now um, we're all trying to find ways that he's have to get guys on base so he can hit, right? So um, I kind of find that comical a little bit. Um, so I think that I don't think anyone can predict who's going to get on base um, in game three or game four. Um, so I feel that you know, kind of there's a, some tweaks that I do make as far as, you know, tail, Freddie, um, the five, six, maybe the seven, eight, nine. Um, but to think that, you know, I'm going to move Shohei to the four or the three, that's just not going to happen. Yeah, that's something that um, he's missing some good pitches. Um, you know, you can look back at the last couple weeks where um, he had the big Musgrove homer. Uh, he had the big homer in San Diego. But outside of that, there's a lot of balls that he's missing. Um, I think we all see that. Will's working hard. Um, so I don't know, um, you know, if it's a uh, the mechanical thing. I know it's not a moment type thing. Um, I do feel that these guys, these guys in particular, maybe the Padres as well, they're trying to crowd him a little bit. I can see that. Um, so... I, I just trust Will in big spots. And so he's always performed in the postseason. And we have a, hopefully we have a long way to go. And I just, I just trust his at bat. And, you know, Seve's a, you know, pretty good against Wright. I just still feel that, you know, if he can kind of leave that ball alone, that ball in, and then, you know, he's going to get some sliders. And, and just, you know, I, I just feel he's, he's uh, due for another big hit or two. Uh, we'll stay back in that area, carry on the left, and then we'll go to Jack. <clears throat> Dave, when you've looked at uh, Shohei's uh, difficulties that he's had in the postseason, they've been against uh, Manaya and Yu Darvish, who are both difficult pitchers. Deliveries are unusual. And Taylor, Tanner Scott, right. Tanner, right. Uh, do you see that as kind of like the, the, all the other at-bats have been fine? I do. I do. And, and I think that, you know, I, I, you know, certainly I think I appreciate – so the guys that he's faced and and uh, understanding that that's probably some of the reason why whatever his production or average or whatever anyone wants to look at, um, he's faced some tough pitchers and they're pitching them very tough. So um, for me, I, I'm looking at tomorrow. I, I feel really good about tomorrow. Probably not going to see Manaya till game six if there is a game six. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I feel good with, but I do feel that he's got to continue to, you know, manage uh, his hitting zone, regardless of who's pitching. And I do think that he can hit anyone, as as we all know. Um, but he's still got to be kind of uh, stubborn in his zone. And I do feel that, you know, tomorrow he's got to get back to the big part of the field. And if he can do that, um, it should bode very well for all of us. Stay back there with Jack. One more on Shohei. Have you been surprised that he's kind of expanded the zone again in the postseason? And, and do you think that's been more a byproduct of 
his approach and trying to do too much or trying to make something happen or just more, you know, pitchers pitching him extra carefully right now and, and that's just kind of being what he's getting at the plate? Um, I was surprised with the Darvish. Um, I, I was surprised that he expanded versus Darvish. Um, you know, Scott is just it, – it's nitrous coming at you with the slider. That's just a tough bat, bat for any left-hander. Um, Manaya. I just can't imagine the ball coming from the first base, first base coming in at you and then trying to hit him. So I, I just don't see that. I, I just think that that's kind of uh, an outlier. Um, but outside of that, I mean, I, for me, honestly, the, the Darvish kind of at bats was a little bit for me. But again, that's something you're facing your childhood idol. I don't know how much that comes into play. I have no idea. And then just to check on some of the, the injured guys, like how's Gavin and, and uh, Freddie and then Huddy doing today? Um, so I, I have, <clears throat> I haven't, I, I talked to Gavin. Gavin feels much better today. Um, so uh, we'll see how he comes in tomorrow, but my expectation is that he'll be in there. Um, Freddie, haven't seen him yet. My expectation is that he'll be in there. And uh, Huddy, haven't seen him either. My expectation is he'll be ready to go tomorrow. Come over to the right side, Fabian. I know uh, Yoshinobu's lined up for game four. Is that sort of still the plan for you guys? That's still the plan, yes. And they go back to uh, Shohei. I mean, is there a tendency like, where you see him expand it's something like bad habits starting to pick up, or is this something where it's isolated, incident, especially when it comes to Darvish, like you mentioned? Yeah, I, I, think, it's, um, I think it's isolated. Um, there have been times that he has to reset I think as all hitters do, um, and sometimes certain pitchers um, sort of kind of trigger bad habits, and you've got to identify that to then reset. Um, so I, I do feel that he's cognizant of that, and so again, my expectation is that he is going to reset today, uh, get to the big part of the field, um, and, and take some good at bats versus Severino. What, what's different about Severino than maybe the version you guys saw last year with the Yankees? Uh, you know what, Fabian? I, I, I can't even really speak to that totally uh, intelligently. Um, I know there's uh, a lot of velocity. Um, there's a slider in there. Um, certainly better versus right than left. But, again, he, he's he's been a big game pitcher. Um, there's some guys that have some history with them. Um, so we'll kind of we'll be ready for for whatever kind of he has planned for us. Let's go to the far left, Bob, and then we can go back to Kirsten. Hey, Dave, there's so much, so much talk in this series about Shohei and American League CS about uh, Judge. You have a theory on why the big boy seemed to get shut down in postseasons, whether it was Bonds back in the day, A Rod had his struggles. Is it a thing where people just focus so much on shutting that one guy down? I, I think that's a combo. Um, I also feel that, you know, and conversely, I, I saw how great David Ortiz was in the postseason. Um, I think it's just you have to be – those guys have certain expectations from everyone and themselves, and you have to be willing to uh, essentially, whether, you know, I say not blink, you know, you have to be willing to just continue to hold until you get your pitch. And if not, knowing that – uh, opposing pitchers are not going to quote unquote let them let you beat them and you have to be willing to be patient um, and so I played with Barry um, and obviously everyone saw it in 2002 then he really came to life and he was just uh, you know extraordinary in that series and once Alex figured it out he was obviously great in the postings but I do think that there was a lot of pressure that they might put on themselves initially um, but when they get back to, it's kind of what I said before is all people expect is them to kind of do what they've done throughout their career, their stat line, their regular season stat line, and as opposed to doing more, you know, and if Barry probably had that mindset, having a 1500, 1200, instead of having a 2000 OPS, he might've been better because that includes walks too. So I don't know, Bob, but it's a, it's a very interesting kind of discussion for sure. Kirsten. 
Quickly going back to Freddie, when you look at just these three games back to back to back, obviously we saw him play night to day back in Los Angeles, but do you feel like with him it's just a day-to-day -day conversation with kind of seeing how he's feeling? And do you think that weather could play into something just considering it is cold and wanting to keep his ankle and his body warm out there? It is a day-to-day -day conversation. Um, I just don't see any world that he doesn't start a playoff game in the NLCS. Um, but again, uh, you know, if he can't do it, that's very telling. Um, the weather um, probably will play a factor. Um, I hope it won't be too kind of uh, limiting. But, yeah, I mean, I think we're mindful of it. But, you know, as of tomorrow, having the off day, um, I feel good about tomorrow. And, and let's just hope that, you know, he can get out of it feeling good for game, you know, four. Jesse in the second row. Very deep. Um I want to ask you about J.D. Martinez. Um, guys have called him like the batting whisperer a little bit. What You know what goes on in the dugout during a game. What, what is he doing there you think that's helpful? And, and even outside the game, where, do you have an anecdote uh, that you can recall from last year? Um, he is sort of the hitting whisperer. Um, he was a very good mentor, has been a good mentor for Mookie. Um, you know, hopefully he's not giving too many trade secrets, which I'm sure he is. Um, how we think on the hitting side. Um, he, he's a hitting savant. I mean, he, he, uh, he loves the game. He's, he's obsessed with hitting. Um, not the greatest of base runners, but uh, he likes to hit. And um, he, just has a, he just commands respect. He's one. Um, he's very likable. He cares. And so uh, obviously that was a big addition for the Mets. And he's helped, I'm sure, you know, in a lot of ways that people just don't even realize. Do two, two last quick ones, shy, straight back, and then we'll finish with Jack. Dave, this isn't specific to Otani, but with that type of elite, high-impact type of player, how do you look at or how weigh the benefits of batting that type of player, lead off, extra at-bats, instant impact, versus maybe trying to put him in a 3-4 you know, where you can maybe leverage some of the damage in, in a bigger way? Yeah, it, it's you know what? It's one of those things that there's uh, – there's a, whether it's a philosophy or a, uh, you know, I guess philosophy, right, is how you construct a lineup given who you have in your lineup. Um, because conversely, you hit him third or fourth, and in that ninth inning, he doesn't get that last at bat, and then the whole world's saying, God, why didn't he hit earlier? Where we all know the world would have changed, right? Um, but those are things that I think that we have complete solace in knowing that uh, giving our best hitter five cracks to be instant offense and also believing that the guys in the bottom of the order um, can create some havoc and get on base and and I thought we did that really well in game one of the CS and so just give them opportunities so I, I just have a hard time kind of trying to I can't predict the game and so I feel good about what I can predict is Shohei hitting one and getting the most at bats from our offense. We'll finish up with Jack. Is the plan to have Jack in game five, or will that depend on the next couple nights? That'll depend on the next couple nights. That's right. Yep. All right, Dave. Thanks. We'll Thanks. see you tomorrow.